Hi, what's up? Happy Throwback Thursday. I think I'm, I like the idea of that. I think every Thursday I'm going to wear something that says throwback in some kind of way. So I thought about that today and that's why I came up with my, my little, see that? It's a cassette tape. I don't know if you can see it close enough, but it says mixtape on it. Remember mixtapes. But anyways, I um, finally got to watch the Bad Girls Club reunion, the first part of it, because they're making three parts of it, because it worked for uh, Atlanta Housewives, and then they did it for, I think, Shaw's A Sunset, and I believe the last two seasons of Bad Girls Club, they did at, at least a two-part reunion or three-part reunion. But anyways, I uh, started watching it, and the very first thing they show, because they showed things a little bit out, out of sequence, was the girls getting winded down. And you know, these heifers aren't shit when you see when you gotta metal detect them before it even comes to a reality uh, reunion show. That that's horrible. Um, we get a montage of a bunch of fights that obviously we're not gonna see in the first show because they always do that. They always let you see just a tiny bit of the beginning of a fight in the last two minutes of the show and you have to wait till next week that's how bad girls club does so they show us a little montage so we know what's to be expected and i was thinking to myself i hope those security guards get paid really well because when they try to break up those fights i think it's harder to break up a bad girls club fight than it would be to break up like a fight between two guys because it's just the the women they get very tangled up in each other and then they get the death grip on on the weave and if it's sewn in it's it's not coming out and they just they're locked up but anyhow um what happened first jasmine walks up with her under boobs hanging out and i don't know i just i just thought it was funny and she kept on trying to put her arms up to show them more yeah um i'm done with her She's talking to Toilet Ring Tiana, and they're, oh, she describes Tiana as being magically delicious, and I thought, like, Lucky Charms? I've never heard anyone say that about a person before, but it is what it is. Um, Jazz Monet says that she wants SAG credentials, meaning that she wants to go into acting, and then um, Tiana says she wants to have a page on IMBD which doesn't exist but there is an imdb i'm sure that's what she was talking about but then i think it was her was it her on the show or some somebody on the show misspelled bitch also so that happens um with these shows sarah and shanae show up and they meet up at a pool and they're discussing their fights with other girls and uh, apparently they became friends on twitter because i don't think they were on at the same time um shanae might have been sarah's replacement but Either way, they've been in contact with each other on Twitter, and now they're best buds. Um, oh, they also discuss how fake the other girls are. Then we get Steph and Gigi meeting up at some empty hotel lobby bar. And Steph keeps talking about Shanae, and Gigi keeps talking about Sarah. And they both find a way of clowning Janelle in her 30-inch weave. And every time I hear Janelle say 30 inches, 30, I think of that vine. I don't know if you guys saw this vine. It was a vine of a lady saying 22 inches, 22 inches, and she's swinging her hair around, and you could tell she's kind of, there's no, she's not showing any clothes in the top, but she's not, I don't think she was showing her, her breast, but you could tell she, that she probably was naked, and then, um, I can't tell you the ending of that vine. You'll have to watch it for yourself so you can be as surprised as I was. <laughs> but look for 22-inch weave on Vine. And um, don't blame me for whatever happens. Cause I, just because I suggest it doesn't mean you have to do it. Anyhow, they're talking about who... Uh, Stephanie and Gigi talk about who they want to fight. And I don't care. Janelle shows up and says her weave is fabulous. Then Andrea shows up with her weave as well. And they meet up and talk about their time in the house. And again, with this let's cheers bullcrap, because no one knows that it's make a toast for some reason. Um, they clown Jazz Monet about her edges, which everybody clowns about her edges or her non existent edges. <laughs> her edges that are in the uh, witness protection plan. <laughs> her edges that are on, they're on the side of a milk carton. Her edges are on a. Uh, of unsolved mystery. <laughs> what else her edges are on? 
her edges are not saved to children. I don't know. There's a million things that her edges people say about her edges, but they're they're tore up. Um, and then she says, I don't know whether she was referring to Jasmine or Tiana, but she said one of them looked like Schmeagel. And that's that's probably pretty true of both of them, really. Then Benzie meets Tiana and Jasmine in the hotel room, and they all talk about Sinead. Benzie wants to fight Sinead, and Benzie has a, a grill on the bottom of teeth, I think. We didn't get a good look at it. I couldn't tell if it was a, a grill or bottom braces. But uh, most likely it was a grill. Um... They talk about how Mimi is not showing up, uh, the I messed with Justin Bieber girl, and but nobody mentioned the other girl, the girl that was there, I don't remember her name, it was a, a white girl with dark hair and she did some little rap song in her um, intro and she left after one day. I don't remember her name but I wonder if she's coming back. Um, Sarah, Shanae, Andrea and Janelle meet over drinks. And Shanae tells Janelle that she kind of regrets how she acted and that if she had to do it again, she probably would not have gotten to an, any altercation with Janelle at all. Um, they call Stephanie irrelevant and a co-signer, which is basically a, a follower, and she, that's what she is. She never really did anything other than the whole trying to fight Shanae, and even that was more of a, um, let me get these girls to be impressed by me doing this. That's what it, I read it as. Um, then 25 minutes in, I all I can think about is, because they showed Tanisha getting her makeup done, and I kept on thinking, you know, if the girls have makeup artists, are they going to use some concealer around Tiana's um, mouth? Because she really needs some something to cover up this darkness around her mouth. That's It's, it's pretty gross. Um, Haley shows up by herself. And she says that she has a Twitter beef with Janelle for some reason, which is what I said. Somebody's going to have Twitter beef. They always have somebody that has Twitter beef. Um, Tanisha goes and she greets the girls in the dressing room. And the girls are going on and on about who they're going to fight. And, um, and the, the editing keeps going back and forth between one group of girls in one room talking about who they're going to fight and another group of girls in another room talking about who they're going to fight. And while I'm watching this, all of a sudden my husband out of nowhere starts yelling, <laughs> Speaker Box, the love below. I don't know if you remember that that music video, but they did like almost like a West Side Story with the rival gangs thing, with the, the jets and the sharks, but it, it was, and it was kind of 1950s style too. But if, if you haven't seen that, um, Roses, I think the name of the song is Roses by Outkast. Look for Roses by Outkast and you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, what else happened? We got another montage because obviously we, we must have forgotten in one week what's happened. And also they need to fit a filler to stretch this out to three parts. Let me see. Tanisha finally comes out and intros the, um, reunion. And this is about... 40 or 45 minutes into the program is when we start the reunion. And as I'm looking at Tanisha, I'm trying to figure out, is she pregnant or is she just getting bigger and bigger? And it doesn't wear well on her. Like, there's some people in the world that they are meant to be big and they carry that bigness well. Like, a um, good example is Oprah. Oprah is a woman that's meant to be big and she looks healthier and normal when she is that size. Tanisha does not look that way. She looks like someone who's really not, may, maybe not meant to be that big, and her frame doesn't carry it well. But if that makes sense to anyone, I, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but I, to me, I, I look at a person's face and I can tell, oh, that person was, was going to be fat from birth. That's what they are. That's, you know, that's how, you know, they their body is just made. And then there's other people that you can look at them and you can just see they're not meant to be fat. They, they just... They have, you know, some different eating habits and unfortunately they're getting fat. Or if they have a medical condition like some people have. Is it thyroid, a thyroid problem if you have a thi hyperactive? Hyperactive thyroid is if you're, it always makes you too skinny and underactive thyroid makes, makes you bigger. So, you know, barring it be being a medical condition, it's an eating problem. And either way, Tanisha just doesn't look like she should be that big. Just around the neck area... It's uncomfortable. You just feel like, how is she breathing with all this? I don't know. I, I feel like she shouldn't be that size. She probably should be thick, but she shouldn't be that big. That's just um, uncomfortable looking. 
Uh, what else happened? Everybody's on stage, and as I was looking all the way across the stage, I felt like collectively there was 50 pounds of weave up there. I would love for someone who knows about weave and knows how many packs each girl probably has on her hair head and how much each pack weighs to, to kind of calculate if I'm close to that that number. Because I thought 10 pounds is too light. 25 pounds maybe if Janelle wasn't up there with 30 inches. But I think 50 pounds of weave would, is about accurate for what was on the stage. What else happened? Jazz's makeup looks a little better. Her hair still didn't look that great because I, I guess it looks better than what it did look, but it still doesn't look good. But her makeup definitely looked a lot better. Um, Tiana still looks like 10 miles of bad goddamn road, and that's with hair and a professional makeup artist. So you know her face is just hit. And that damn bottom lip. Every time you see her, she's sitting there looking like this. I don't even think I'd get my bottom lip to stick out as far as hers. Like, I don't know. I'm looking more like Chalky White than, than, than Tiana. But anyhow, since you haven't noticed Boardwalk Empire, I swear that actor has to do all his lines with his mouth like this. What that mean to me? <laughs> that was the closest imitation I have of Chalky White. Sorry, I can't. I'm not an actor. Where did I leave off? Um, they showed a montage of Haley and the girls fighting. And the biggest thing that happened was that Tiana and Jazz actually admitted that what they did was whack and corny. And I thought, that shocked me. But at the same time, they like at first I took it as, oh wow, that's very big of them. But then I realized they probably get attacked every day on Twitter for that. They probably just wanted to say that so that people stop direct messaging them to kill yourself. I, I really believe that they just felt like, oh, we got to clean it up because these people are coming after us bad. Because I, I can imagine how many tweets, negative tweets they get. Definitely more than any tweets bigging them up. Um, Andrea and Shanae come out and then it cuts to commercial and we get some scene of Tanisha trying to twerk in a dressing room with Jazz and Tiana. And all I could focus on was Tiana's boobs, and I'm trying to wonder why are they so deflated and, and baggy and saggy. She's supposed to be in her early 20s. Why is it... Why, why are they... They just look... They look like she's had four or five children. I don't even think... I think of... I know women who've had three children, and, and they're not that, you know, just deflated and... Dumb, they just look bad for a young girl. Get a get, go to Victoria's Secret and get a really nice bra, and don't be seen without a bra on on television because they you don't have you don't have Cynthia Bailey boobs that you can just go out like that. And Cynthia is forty two years old. How is a forty two year old woman sitting up higher than you, Tiana? And you're in your early twenties, and they're already just hanging almost to your damn waist. That's I don't know. Get a bra. Or if you get enough bad girls club money, go ask Sarah where she got her boobs done and go get yours done. Um, then also, the, we, during commercial, I finally noticed this stupid Oreo commercial. I know I must have seen it at least five times, but I never paid attention to it. This time I actually paid attention to this Oreo commercial and it's the song is singing about what would happen if you gave an Oreo to a stranger. And you see this little cartoon giving a vampire that's wearing some red Chuck Taylors an Oreo. And then in the next scene, you see the vampire, he's still holding the Oreo and he's in a convertible driving around in the sunshine. And that makes no sense at all because, number one, a vampire, would a vampire even eat cookies? I don't know. They don't have to eat. Secondly, an Oreo cookie is not going to cure, you know, the their propensity for burning up and dying in the sunlight. So that it just made no sense, and I, I, I don't like it at all. I like my vampires to be the way vampires are supposed to be, and not this this Twilight bullshit. I'm I'm not with that. Stop pussyfying everything. You know, you know, fucked up the vampires. You fucked up the werewolves. Then he had some damn uh, zombie comedy about love, and I'm I no stop it. Let them be horrific creatures that they are. The only comedy I'll take is like Blade. There was some funny stuff in Blade, but I, but you know I'm on off on a tangent, but I would I would go and pay to watch a Blade Four movie. 
Wesley Snipes is out of jail now. So you can you can make a Blade 4. Um, what did I say? We get back to the show, and um, Andrea comes out, and she's wearing this Ed Hardy-looking shirt that you find at the, the um, uh, what do you call them? The tourist shops by the beach, or at least in Florida. If you go to any of the little tourist shops that are by Daytona Beach, New Smyrna Beach, Cocoa Beach, um, uh, was it, Tam not Tampa Bay, um, not Treasure Island, I can't remember, but Gulf of Mexico, Tampa, any of those little shops, you go in there and you always see these little tie-dyed shirts with all these rhinestones on them, and that's why I always associate that shirt with the those beach, um, stores, I guess, but that's what her shirt reminded me of. Um, Shanae, she looked better, she had really nice eye makeup on, but, um, the makeup artist, they, it's like they either didn't get around to doing her bra her eyebrows or they just didn't finish them. And the thing is, her look looked unfinished without the brows being done because it, eyebrows can make or break your look. I mean, they they can really enhance how you look. Case in point, NeNe Leakes. She's got, I think she has the most perfect eyebrows in the game for reality shows. And you can see how much of a difference it makes on her face along with the, the professional makeup and, and the shorter hair. Because she does have a face more suitable for shorter hair. Because in season one of um, Real Housewives of Atlanta, she had a longer weave on and it didn't suit her as well as the short hair. But anyways, the eyebrows. They should have done Sinead's eyebrows and I think it would have it would have looked better. Um... Uh, they showed the little scene with the rapper saying that they wanted Shanae in the video and they were acting so impressed with her dancing and I didn't, well, they didn't show us the whole thing but from what I saw, it wasn't that impressive and it made me think, are they really impressed with her dancing or did, just en did they just enjoy seeing her boobs bouncing? Because I think that's what it was because the guy's sitting there and she's hopping around and she's got to have like a 44 double D or maybe smaller on the back maybe 38 double D or E and those are bouncing like crazy and that I believe that's what those guys were looking at they weren't looking so much at her dancing and what else happened they um uh Tanisha starts to talk to Stephanie about her actions and Stephanie says quote I have a whole much of growing to do and I thought at the same time, you have a whole lot of learning the English language to do as well. Um, Tanisha corrects Gigi about jumping in a fight because Gigi starts talking about how she wanted to fight Sinead first. And Tanisha means says, yeah, but you jumped in it while Stephanie was fighting. And that's not right. You don't, you don't go and fight somebody who's already in a fight with somebody else because that's jumping. Um... I forgot what else was going on because I was noticing the camera pan to the audience. Did you notice there was a girl in the audience? She reminded me of Marie Laveau, <laughs> from the, the Angela Bassett version of Marie Laveau from um, American Horror Story. She had the long braids. I know Laveau has the twists instead, but the same. it just gave me that same thing. And she had all these bangles going down her arm. And it just I just looked at her and thought, Marie Laveau. Then camera pans to another guy. He's sitting there looking like Prince with some white sunglasses on. Then I happen to notice right behind him, there's a guy looking completely bored. And he has his I, maybe iPhone or iPod earbuds in like he's not even paying attention. He's just sitting there looking completely bored. And I'm, I'm thinking he might be a, a, a seat filler. Like maybe they didn't have enough people and they just, you know, had well they probably have a bunch of people in the audience that are extras anyways not really I don't know somebody let me know if you've been to a bad girls club reunion and you're just a regular person that got to go let me know because I really think it's not regular people in the audience I think those are extras and they probably each are getting fifty dollars a day and two meals or maybe more it's LA they might get a hundred dollars a day and two meals from craft services and because they just look like they all came from Central Casting and they all react like they came from Central Casting because there's nothing on that stage that you had to do a about that the audience is doing. They're just doing too much and I they have to be acting. Um, what else happened? Janelle, she comes out with her hair and this dress that 
where are these young girls getting these 1980s hooker dresses? There's just, there's no place that's appropriate to wear that dress except for hooking at the, on the corner or in a strip club. There's no, you don't, it's like, it's, I guess stripper clothes and, 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 and hooker clothes that, that this is like the thing. And she, and she knew that she was going to have an altercation. Why would you come out there with a dress that's open all the way down to here? That just leaves you open to have one of your titties flop out while you're fighting. Which, I, this is not a Pam Breer movie. They're not going to show it, so there's no point in you doing it. So, um, she comes out and they do her little montage and you hear her saying that her weave costs $1,000 and that it's 30 inches and that's like a big deal to her. Oh, and they question her weave. She's about to go over and show Tanisha her weave and let her touch it because it's 100% Brazilian hair. That's what they said. I'm starting to learn this this stuff. This what's popular now because they got the Brazilian hair and on thicker than water. The girl said that she had Cambodian was it Cambodian hair or Malaysian hair? I'm not sure Malaysian hair, Indian hair. I think she also had Brazilian hair. I don't know. But like I said, it's all it's all a lie. There's no FDA FDA that's going through and stamping that, that these are officially hair coming from these different places. They can pretty much put whatever they want on a package and tell you whatever the hell they want because it's not regulated. There's no American National Federation of Hair Weed. So you can sit there and think your hair came from there, but it probably didn't. Um, what else happened? Oh, yeah. Jazz Monet snuck Janelle. And on the one hand, Jasmine is wrong for that because Janelle wasn't looking. But on the other hand, Janelle, why the hell weren't you looking? You knew she was going to try to sneak you one way or another. You're going to stand there playing with your hair. You took your shoes off, and you're going to stand there playing with your hair and looking all around the room when you knew that girl was going was gonna to sneak you. And then you didn't even get a chance to get back at her because the security staff were ready by that point and they grabbed you up before you could even put some hands on her so that was just stupid on on both sides um and then Tanisha comes out with her marshmallow gun and I'm I I don't like every year to have Tanisha pulling food out of her purse or talking about how hungry she is eating chips or something and to me it's it's cooning it's fat people I've mentioned cooning before and there's different types of cooning. There's what I call black people cooning, and that's the people in Thicker Than Water. And then there's gay cooning, and that's that's Neil on um, Houston Beauty or Lawrence on Real Housewives of Atlanta. And this is fat people cooning, where you're where you're, you know, pretty much playing up to a stereotype, and it's it's stupid. I don't I don't like it. I feel like Tanisha, your personality is enough. You don't you shouldn't have to do these stupid little things. Just be Tanisha. We like Tanisha. That's I mean I, I I like Tanisha. I can't speak for everybody. Maybe you guys like Tanisha too, but I like her. I think she should host more shows. Just stop with the oh since I'm a big girl I gotta pull out food and eat it right now. That's I got friends that are big girls and they don't just pull out food and eat it at random times. Doesn't mean it doesn't. As a matter of fact, I do have skinny people that do it. My little, my youngest sister is about this big, skinny, skinny. I think she might, might just, might just barely weigh a hundred pounds soaking wet. Now that is a little girl that will pull out food and eat it at random times. <laughs> I, I feel like, I feel like she munches every couple, every couple hours. She's snacking on something, snacking on something, but she's tiny. So, like I said, that's that's a, she's playing up to a stereotype, but. Anyways, that's what I have to say about this reunion. I don't have too much to say when the when it's part one because not much. Everybody knows that not much is gonna happen in part one. They're just gonna try to uh, set make the setting for the fights that are gonna happen in part two and part three. And I guess I'll just wait for that. But oh, there is one other thing I wanted to say. Um, I don't know why the girls are coming out there and then taking their shoes off. Um, to fight or coming out there, like I said, with the the dress that Janelle had on, or or you know, just the general way the way they're dressing, and that's why I actually respected more. Um, oh, what was her name? Rocky, Rocky, and uh, was it Shannon? I respect them for coming out there with pants, sneakers, hair braided up, and tank tops on or t-shirts on ready with the shamrock t-shirts on ready to do what they came there to do I respect that 
Or if there was somebody else that did that before they even did it. Some girl came out there. Char. Was it Char? I think Char came out there and she had on sneakers and jeans. And she came there for one reason. That was to, that was to whoop ass. I respect that more than you come out and you got these six inch stilettos on. And a dress that's going to rip off your body like that. And think you're going to fight somebody. All you're going to do is, is slip across that floor and bust your own ass. There's no sense in fighting a fight that you end up hurting yourself more than the other person can hurt you. Because you're falling all over the place. Anyways, that's another tangent, but that it is what it is. I actually did a video last year about the whole shamrock thing, and I don't think I ever posted it. If I find a video, I'll post it. And I don't care if it's late as hell. <laughs> I'll, I'll post it next Thursday. Thir fr throwback Thursday. Post that old-ass video that I never uploaded about Bad Girls Club last year. And it is... What it, or was that the year before last? I can't even remember. No, it was last year because it couldn't have been that long ago. Anyhow, if you made it through to the 26 minutes of me rambling and going off on tangents, thank you so much for watching the whole video. Bye-bye.